Juicy Co-Creators, Lilou here. I'm in Dublin in beautiful Ireland at Le Crivant, well, the, the French named restaurant here in Dublin, one star Michelin. Ooh la la, it was so good. The, I'm here with the two owners, um, Derek and Salianne. Salianne, sorry. Is this a typical Irish name? Uh, no, not really. I think most Salianne's now are about five years old, aren't they? Yeah. So, so you're already pioneering already something. Pioneering, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. No, yeah. no you call Sally Ann, Sally Ann. Yeah, some guys try to say Sally. No, you, my name is Sally Ann, and my name is Derry. <laughs> <laughs> We're right in Ireland right no, now. Different names, but uh, Derry, uh, like you have London Derry in Northern Ireland, and I was named Derry. So that's um, kind of the Irish connection for me. Yes. Um, but uh, what's the name? What's the name? Not what? important. Not important, no. Well, uh, L'Ecrivain de Fondry was a lucky name for your restaurant because it's bringing a lot of people and uh, I love the spirit in which y you did that. Can you tell us what makes Irish food so different from other kind of foods? Every country has its own um, character and soul and I think that happens in the cuisine, you know. Um, you go to any country, you can almost judge the country on their food, what the kind of people live there. You know, the food is uh, austere or very basic. You know, their um, food is not important. So the culture is more based upon um, eating to survive rather than to live to eat. You know, it's mm -hmm. two different things. Like mm -hmm. in France, Italy, old food culture, um, their interest in food is every day. Um, it's very important. Food is very important to the culture. We're Ireland, we're going that way, slowly but surely. I think uh, we're, in, you know, improving every year. Yeah, um, it's amazing. I've seen the past ten years how the 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 Anglo-Saxon and, and, and Irish food has evolved. It's pretty impressive. It's in, in fast progress. Like we see now, international cuisine and it's very elaborate. You must be so inspired by your husband. Uh, absolutely, <laughs> you know, um, people travel more. People know more about food. People are much more informed. And of course, you have the World Wide Web. So if you're not sure of something, you can look it up. You've got all that information at your fingertips now that you didn't have 10 years ago. So when you're explaining, you know, how a certain dish is done, um, people are with you all the way. It's very seldom that they'll say, where did that come from or where did that originate or, or how do you pronounce that again? Most people are very well informed. And the fact that Derry uses all Irish produce yeah. and he supports local and artisan producers um, and that the fish comes in every day that everything is, I mean, the menu is, is dictated by what comes in the back door as opposed to what he would like to do all the time. He'll use what he gets and, as I say, it will be the best of Irish and the freshest produce available. I mean, he has an organic vegetable supplier and whatever he brings, Derry says, fine, I will put that on the menu. He doesn't call him and say, I want X, Y, and yeah. Z. It's whatever this man produces. As Derry said, if it's good enough for him to put so much tender, loving care into it, I'll put it on my menu. Isn't yeah. that basic? That's really the secret ingredient, isn't it? L the love. It is. But Salihan's my unbelievable spokesperson here for me. Huh? I don't, <laughs> you don't need me here. But, you know, no, Salihan's dead right. I mean, um, I actually uh, made a decision many years ago that I would know every single person who supplies us yeah. personally. I would meet them and know them. And most of them have become friends. Um, I meet them. I go to their farms or to their trawler or to their uh, butchers or farms and uh, meet them and say hello uh, have a cup of tea uh -huh. have a beer maybe yeah. um, and when you connect that way when you make it a friendship and um, a kind of a what's the word a joint partnership to it's achieve like a community even it is I mean the thing about it is uh, I love that kind of community spirit a closeness um, keeping you know supporting your neighbor supporting someone who yeah. does something really well um, really, for me, I'm lucky that way. Uh, the food we get here is so simple to work with because it's so good. Um, my danger is I can't overwork it. I have to be careful. I've got to keep the integrity of the, uh, the food mm -hmm. as much as I can. Mm -hmm. But I have to make it exciting mm -hmm. that someone comes in here and say, hey, that was good. I can't really produce food that you can cook at home. You know, people come here to have something they can't cook at home. or co you know, wouldn't be able to or too much time. So that's what we do here, I think. And I hope I achieve that. Mm. I try to achieve that. Um, but it's difficult. Sometimes, you know, you make mistakes as you go along. But really, the key factor in um, any dish is the ingredients. Mm -hmm. If the ingredients are tops, 
after that it's really unless you're a bad cook <laughs> yeah. you know it really yeah. is true and in, and in the end it's the, your relationship i guess with the producers and with those farmers and the people that provide it you have to trust them it's a relationship well, in actual fact i'll say to you most of my producers are great characters mm -hmm. they're great fun people and mm -hmm. um, the their lives are um i wouldn't say simple but they have this um outlook in life that uh, it's not about money it's not about success um or glory or you know compliments it's about um having a, a nice uh, life mm -hmm. um adding to society making people happy um i think it's great actually you know i always get jealous sometimes i go to their places around ireland and they have mm -hmm. lovely places lovely little house a few acres mm -hmm. and they're growing organic vegetables and normally it's a couple's so they're you know a husband and wife team a couple of kids and they have a very nice lifestyle Are you are you careful uh, with the GMOs and the um, organics and all of that? Are you into this kind of not war, but uh, well, um, at the moment um, Ireland is GMO free. Um, we're one of the few countries in the world that has that, um, and we're very very protect protective of that. Um, I'm a member of Eurotorx, and Eurotorx is a Euro European community of chefs. There are seven thousand uh, chefs members, and we're very active. Uh, we have an office in Brussels. Uh -huh. And we have full-time staff there, and they monitor uh, every day all the legislation going through or any, any debates. They get involved, and we put our impact input into that. So we're, uh, our stance is very important on GMOs. Um, I would be anti-GMOs uh, for obvious reasons. I think um, it's big business wants GMOs. I'm sorry I've been serious here, but no, no, no. This is know. this is part of those videos. I've I've, I've traveled the world and and and, I'm, and I want to travel the world mainly last year in the U.S. But it is it is a big concern and it is uh, it is something that we all have to step up and it starts with us. Oh, it is. I mean, um, I got to say to uh, big business or big farming methods do explode, and we see that over here in Ireland with the mad cow disease. Yeah. Um, you know, if any abattoir has a problem and they're so big now, it, shut, it means the whole thing shut down. You have a kind of a wipeout completely. Where if you s farm on a small scale, if it's a problem, it's one small area, maybe one farm that has to shut down. So really, I, th I can see us going back actually, I can see the next decade or two, uh, farming and production of food going back to basics. Um, rethinking it, fishing for instance. I mean, we're fishing the, fishing the seas clean. So we're going to have to look at how we eat, uh, what we eat, when we eat it. You know, when I was a kid growing up, um, beef was a special occasion, maybe once every two months. Chicken was maybe once every two weeks. You know, um, they were special, special foods. Mm -hmm. Now chicken is every day, beef is every day. Um, and as a society, we have to look at this and say, what are we going to change? We have to change it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, being a vegetarian, a vegetarian uh, will tell you, people who are vegetarian will tell you, they only use 10% of the work, 10% uh, of a meat eater. Like, we are 90% more using more of the Earth's resources than a vegetarian is, if you look at the power that way. Yeah, yeah. We don't need to eat meat every day. We don't need that many proteins. No, no. Yeah. we don't. And I'd say 25% of our customers are vegetarians. We have a lovely vegetarian menu again that changes regularly and again he's very inventive with it so um, you can still be a vegetarian or a pescatarian and still go out and dine and get everything you wanted and everything you liked it done as you say again something different to what you would do at home yeah. and um, you still get the oohs and ahs for the fish dishes as you do for the, the vegetarian oh you do i miss that i miss the oohs and ahs i get the oohs and ahs <laughs> you, you get them in the kitchen afterwards but we do we get a great response because he's um I mean, he's not afraid to change things. Our daughter is a strict vegetarian, so he tends to use her sometimes as a guinea pig when he's trying something completely different. And she'll tell him straight up, yes, that works. No, that doesn't, doesn't she? Yeah. And then we have a son who'd eat the leg of a chair if it was seasoned properly, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a family thing. Yeah. Everybody gets involved. Huh? Yeah. Well, it's true. I mean, I mean, I mean, let's be honest about it. I mean, Sally and I myself are sitting here with this restaurant, but I mean, any restaurant is uh, teamwork, you know. 22 years, 22 years. 22 years, that's right, yeah. But I mean, we have uh, like 10 chefs in the kitchen. There's about 15 front of house, you know. Like we have a lot of people who make things happen. It's not just me or sally Ann or both of us, you know. I mean, I think any, any, any small business, yeah has to have that has to have a good team it's, it's a dream it's a dream of many people to have their own restaurant a lot of tell us about the reality of it <laughs> don't do it <laughs> don't do it no uh, buy a backpack um and just tour the world and um, kind of hide for about 20 years um 
actually often say, say sometimes I'd like to do sometimes is get my uh, iPhone iPhone now isn't it and just throw it over my shoulder yeah. and walk keep walking you know and get a small boat and sail just keep sailing to the horizon and keep going here yeah. uh, that's my dream actually now yeah. is I think we're going to do that actually. I think our dream is actually next few years is to do that I think uh -huh. we're going to travel the world in a boat where we sail so I think we're going to do that um, get away because having a restaurant is constant transformation and reinventing and rethinking as you said you can't really do the same than what other people can do in their home so it's constantly where are we at and plus you have the the probably the pressure kind of of the one star michelin yeah. huh? it is. that changes it does. things doesn't it it does <laughs> i mean you know it does uh, like the thing about it is uh, you are uh, benchmarked every every day and every night you're benchmarked by every customer so you know that's something they're tough they are tough i yeah. mean you know that's a worldwide thing and why not being tough i mean coming in here you know it's a hundred bucks ahead at least so you know why not um that's fair i think um when people um do have a complaint or a problem uh, if it's handled you know said properly and handled properly um, it works for everyone mm -hmm. it makes you stronger makes you better um, you must listen to your customers i think that's what makes our success i mean sally Ann's great with that we listen to our customers don't we we do i mean the customer may not always be right but they are the customer and you do have to take things on board i mean it is a performance so I my lip here. we yeah i know that's why he's in the kitchen and i'm outside um he wouldn't be as as patient sometimes but um it is a performance i mean you're as good as your last meal really and uh you know if it, it's the old story if people are happy they'll tell 10 friends if they're unhappy they'll tell 110 yeah. so we have to make sure they leave very happy and that they tell at least 10 friends yeah. And that's what keeps us going. I mean, a lot of our business is um, repeat business. And it's nice to see the same people coming back and again to remember that they don't like ice or they don't like lemon or they're dairy free or they're whatever their allergies are or their likes or their dislikes. And again, they feel comfortable coming back because they're aware that we're aware of their different um, requirements and that it's not a big deal. Mm. What, what are the, 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 the products now that are being used in the Irish cuisine? Is it still the potatoes? Or is it chain? <laughs> oh, I shouldn't say that because I, I, I just had an amazing lunch. Yeah. Let me tell you, with so many ingredients I didn't have for 20 years. Well, maybe not. Maybe five. Yeah, no, actually, no. First of all, I may say the potato is a very honorable vegetable. It really is. I mean, um, for generations, a lot of people in the world survived on that. You know, I don't think we'd be here only for the potato, let's be honest. Um, yes, the potato is in the decline, um, for different reasons, I think. You know, um, it's because it's a carb. It's a carb, you see, and people don't want carbs anymore. You know, I mean, but funny enough, pasta is, I don't know, pasta's only increasing a lot, but... Um, so much gluten in it. Yes, yeah. there is, and there's gluten, and also gluten-free is a big thing now, you know, modern living. But still, I think um, carb carbs are very important in a diet, you know, really. Um, and yes, we do potatoes, but yes, it's not base, potato based. You know, I mean, I think you had lunch today. It was one potato dish. You know, as a side, uh, palm, I think it was palm fondant, and that's um, you know. a wonderful cob, uh, wonderful asparagus with some monkfish at the beginning that were stripped. It was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, we use a lot of slow cooking, um, which I think you know is pretty big in now. You know, water bathing um, works really well for meaty fish like monkfish um, and beef, lamb. It's great for meat. Um, because the uh, textures the meat and uh, tenderness, um, and we did all the veg in the bag as well, cooking the bag in the water. It locks in, locks in the flavour of the veg. Um, where the old days we used to, you know, you get their ve raw veg and put it into boiling water and strain it off, but all the nutrients and all the flavours from the veg went down in the sink in the water. Yeah. So doing it in a bag, it, you know, so you're kind of doing it a, a roundabout way, and it really works, you know. So that's kind of uh, new techniques. I think uh, people want to eat lighter. Yes. I mean, the old days where you had a good meal is when you were um, really full. You kind of, yeah. wow, I'm stuffed. That's gone. I think yeah. people want to leave a table now uh, feeling refreshed, happy, and feeling that was good. Yeah. But it's feeling good. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. Uh, would you agree? Something light, on? light, and uh, yeah, like tasty. tasty. Yeah, yeah, they want so they want something tasty, something that's going to um, excite. excite their taste buds, mm. to make them think about it, and then you know they'll say, yeah, that was worth it. You want people to feel, I mean, we're in the middle of a very bad recession and you want people to feel they've had value for money. I mean, at the end of the day, nobody wants to um, spend money if they're not going to get value for it, if they're not going to feel that they've had something worth a while. And um, that, that's a challenge too, because people's expectations are higher and higher all the time and you've got to rise to that challenge. And um, we do as best as we can, don't we? 
Yeah, we try. We try. <laughs> <laughs> um, expectations, no, it's something you have to match and yeah. try and uh, realize their expectation. Difficult. Look, I mean, really, it's a very simple thing. You know, people come in to eat, to enjoy. And what's the best thing in life is to uh, sit at a table with family or friends, have a nice, nice bit of food, a nice glass of wine, a good chat, um, and you know, everyone wins. I think yeah. it's, uh, the most important thing we, do, we can do culturally as human beings is to eat together yeah, and share together. You know, it's called uh, breaking bread. Yes. I think that's a beautiful saying, isn't it? To break bread together is a really nice thing, yeah. I think, in life. And um, I think it's, uh, it brings us, if you have friends and you go out to eat with them, your friendship actually uh, becomes a lot more secure, uh, better foundations from uh -huh. it, you know. Where did you had your creative moments come from? When does those happen? Like you're like, oh my goodness, I have to try this. Is there a specific moments? Not really. Or you're in your the kitchen or you might be with your wife or you might be out of town or in the market or well, it's just... Yeah, well, it's other chefs as well, other chefs and chefs who work here first of all, mind you, and then, you know... Um, and then we dine out. Yeah. We, we do tend to travel. Yeah, but I try to avoid it. to check what others are doing too. Everybody else. You do have to yeah, see what I, everybody no, else is doing. That. I avoid that, really avoid that. Um, taking ideas from other, other restaurants, especially here, really avoid that completely. I actually don't do it. In actual fact, if I see something really good on, I'm envious because I said I wouldn't mind doing that, but I won't do it. I won't copy. Mm -hmm. um, in other countries or yeah, other no. capitals either? No, I, I go eat, we eat a lot abroad. New York, London, Paris. We go around a fair bit. Um, San Sebastian's our favourite, isn't it? But um, also, again, I don't take much ideas from there because those restaurants are for that region. Like a New York restaurant is going to be for New York or for um, like LA or San Francisco was there last year. It suits that city. Because yeah. that city is not Dublin, you know. I'm a Dublin restaurant, Dublin chef, so I got to do the food that suits here, yeah. that makes us a bit different. Um, I that try. It has to be a challenge too, because with all this international cuisine, yeah. I mean, people from all around the world that you have here. Uh, I mean, this is becoming really a melting pot these days. And and as we were s saying earlier, yes, there are some ingredients that yeah. don't taste the same in a particular place than another. So there is yeah, a yeah. Dublin feel. 100% right. You're actually 100% right there. Um, I think it's the climate, you know, and the kind of noise of the city. That gives it um, its own unique flavor and the, the, the accent. Yeah. Our accent's totally different than, say, New York, that's for sure. But um, you know, I'm proud of that. I'm very yes. proud of Dublin and where it's coming and where it's going. Where is it going? I think it's going really up. Um, we have a young population in Dublin now, you know, all, I mean, the vast majority say it would be under 30. Under 30. Under 30. The majority in Dublin would be under 30, you can see it. Um, and actually, funny enough, we get a lot of, lot of uh, 20 plus coming into the restaurant, couples, a lot. So you see that kind of vibrant. Um, Do they have the money? Yeah, well, you know, yes. And, you know, they look upon maybe uh, come here once every two months, you know. Um, it's a night out instead of going to the theatre. Uh, in Ireland in the old days, the uh, Irish pub was the uh, centre of the social night. That's changed a lot. What's happening is now people are coming to the restaurant, and that's the social centre, restaurants now, and maybe the pub afterwards for one or two drinks. It's not the whole night, it's yeah. the restaurant, and then maybe half eleven, midnight, the uh, weekends especially, the pubs will be busier. Um, and Irish pubs, by the way, are just brilliant. Mm. I mean, I think they have a u unique... unique um, Ambience. Feel, yeah. Oh, they have, really. I mean, I know around the world they have the Irish pub copied. Not the same. I mean, once you're in Dublin or in Ireland or in the country, the pubs are just mm. so different. I mean, have you been to a few pubs yet? Uh, I just got here last night, but okay. I think tonight there's a literacy uh, pub crawl going oh, on. We'll have yeah. a great time on that. Yeah, yeah. The literary pub crawl. They'll bring you into all the different pubs where all our famous writers used to... Um, you, yes. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's one story about a pub down in Bagot Street that James Joyce and Brendan Bean um, used to meet up, and there's a bench down on the canal. Um, apparently. Oh, Patrick Kavanagh, wasn't it? Sorry, Patrick Kavanagh, I beg your pardon, and Brendan James Bean. Sorry, dead. James Joyce was dead. Patrick Kavanagh <laughs> and Brendan Bean. And they um, decided they'd go for a drink in Bagot Street, but there wasn't one pub that either of them hadn't been barred from. So they went into a, an off license and bought a bottle and sat down on a bench down on the canal. So you'll see that bench with. Um, Patrick Kavanagh sitting on it and that's the story of the bench that they sat down and that's where they used to meet for a drink down on Bagot Street Bridge. Did you meet on a bench? You too? No, no, no. Actually we met in a hotel. We did, yeah. We met in a hotel, yeah. Yeah, I, I met a guy that used to work with Derry and um, I went out for a drink with him and his sister and his pals and he said he wanted me to meet some of his friends and Derry was one of his friends and there was no going back. 
What was it? <laughs> Someone said to me a while ago, what's your biggest extravagance in your life? Or what was your biggest extravagance? And I said, meeting Sally Ann. <laughs> <laughs> so worth it. Yeah. Well, you know something, you know, we're married, um, believe, it, believe it or not, we're married um, this year, 25 years, married. And um, Sally, I said, Sally Ann, where do you want to do this this year? And she said, Derry, she, Sally, Sally Ann was uh, reared in Chicago. So we're going to go there. And then Hawaii, she wants to go, never been to Hawaii, so we go there. You have to go to Kauai. Yes. Kauai. Oh, Kauai, is it? But, um, but hang on, but I always said, someone said, how come there you've you know, lasted so long, 25 years, so happily? And I said, two words. Yes, love. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> yes, love. Mm. Compromise, darling. Yeah. Compromise. Well, we so. work well together. I mean, you know, we have a restaurant here and we work well together. We have other things besides here, little businesses here and there do different things. I have a yeah. food, food range out there and that goes very well. Um, actually going to New York and Boston very shortly. So look out for that. Um, <laughs> hopefully that'll take off there. And you're on uh, Irish TV. Yes, um, I have great fun. It's, it's, um, it's a midday program that they have five women on the panel and we discuss everything from men, 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 men. And, and There's a lot to talk about. <laughs> there is a lot no, to talk about. No, not, we we uh, discuss current affairs, whatever the topic of the day is or whatever the headlines in the newspapers are. And um, sometimes it can be very serious and sometimes it can be great fun. And most you can bring the écrivain also in there? Not really. They, uh, if they are looking for um, culinary... Uh, answers. No, I do, on TV. They, Derry does it on TV. But uh, I'm afraid I don't cook. I married a wonderful chef, so I don't need Why to. Why would you? I, I do. No, Sally Ann's on a different TV station, a rival. I'm on the, um, no, we're actually two different stations, and we don't cross over, do we? No. No, Sally Ann's on um, TV3, and I'm on RT, the Irish, Irish state broadcaster. Oh, cool. And they don't allow you, you can't, you can't change over, it's amazing. But I do um, live afternoon cooking, cooking. And um, it's exciting because it's live. Yes. So you're cooking live is great fun, actually. Tell us what we have here in front of us. Um, petit fours. And they look very nice, don't they? <laughs> yeah, they were lovely, this one. Yeah, a little chocolate tart. Yeah. A little marshmallow. Uh, this is shining. It's got it is, like uh, little. Yeah, uh, gold dust. I know. Very elaborate, isn't it? Really. Very tasty, too. Good, yeah. Thank you for this wonderful time and thank you for taking the time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Enjoy, enjoy the literary pub crawl tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Much love, my beautiful co-creators from Dublin. Bye. <laughs> Bye.